Good morning and welcome to worship on this third Sunday of Easter. In the chancel we have a red rose and it celebrates the birth of a granddaughter, Hannah Elizabeth, to Tom Pfeiffer and Gay Ford. The baby was born on Saturday, April 18th, and the parents are Tom and Molly Pfeiffer. Just a reminder that we now meet weekly on Tuesdays at 11 a.m. for intercessory prayer. And we also meet on Wednesdays for prayer at 7 a.m., 12 noon, and 7 p.m. All the info is on the homepage of our website. Our worship begins with the prelude, helping us center ourselves in the Lord's presence. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the Good Shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in this pond, and for water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. from Acts chapter 2. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. Word of God, word of life. Thanks Thanks be to God. God.
1 Peter chapter 1. If you invoke as Father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him, you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. God. Two disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things have taken place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, O oh, foolish you are, and how foolish and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed, and broke it. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, 
And they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise, you, Praise to you, Christ. Christ. I have never felt more like a stranger than walking into a pub in a tiny town called Finnefort on the western coast of the Isle of Mull, one of the Inner Hebrides off the west coast of Scotland. This past December, after Christiane flew home, Pastor Mark and I were staying in an Airbnb on the Isle of Mull, and we wanted restaurant fare that night instead of eating the microwaved pizza which we had been enjoying in our little cottage. We knew there was only one eating establishment open in town because December, December is not the tourist season in that far-flung corner of the world. So we even got there early, like 4.30, 5 o'clock. It was already dark and cold outside, so we were happy to step into the warmth and the light of the pub. As we entered, we couldn't fail to notice that the buzz of conversation immediately hushed and everyone turned around to stare at us. I smiled a little uncomfortably, I'm sure, and walked over to the fairly crowded bar to request a table. The young woman I spoke to looked like a deer in the headlights and turned silently, almost pleadingly, toward the older man standing next to her. He told us there were no tables available. The whole place was closed and booked for the local school's PTA Christmas dinner. Alrighty then. So out we went again into the cold, dark, now rainy night. We drove 15 minutes east down the unlit, winding, single track road to another little town, the next little town named Bunasan a name that may ring a bell for you because that's the name of the tune to Morning Has Broken, named after this little town where thankfully there was another open pub. We enjoyed a nice dinner there in a lovely room with a blazing fire, and we discussed how bizarre it had been to be received like visitors from another planet down the road. That young woman behind the bar had seemed almost fearful of us. We felt very much like strangers in a strange land. There is a stranger with a capital S in today's gospel. As the Lord walks along the road to Emmaus, he catches up with two disciples who do not recognize him. We're given the name of one of them, Cleopas, and some say that Cleopas could be the same person as Clopas. There was a Mary, the wife of Clopas, who stood at the foot of the cross with the mother of our Lord and Mary Magdalene, according to the fourth gospel. So some scripture commentators say that this was a married couple heading down the road to Emmaus. We don't really know. Whoever they were, the Lord asks them, so what's this you're discussing so intently as you walk along? And Cleopas answers a little sassily, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? who doesn't know the things that have taken place there in these days. Obviously, the Lord knew more than they did, but he wisely and pastorally invites them to tell their story, including their sad confession. We had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. We had our hopes up that he was the one. They were so very, very disappointed that they were very, very honest about their hopes being dashed. And they didn't care about making themselves vulnerable to accusations of being naive for believing in a Messiah who appeared to end up being a has-been. There's a lot of disappointment going around these days. In talking with the parents and the grandparents of our children and youth and with some of the kids themselves, they're sad and frustrated about a boatload of postponements and outright cancellations in their young lives. Class trips, proms, awards dinners, 
graduations, First Holy Communion, which would have been last night here at Holy Trinity, confirmations. From our perspective, these disappointments kind of pale in comparison to the inability to visit a sick loved one in the hospital, to gather for a wedding, a funeral. But we can also look back to how crushed we felt in our childhood and adolescence by the things others considered small, and so our hearts go out to them. Our prayer is that in all their disappointments, our children and youth trust that Christ walks with them on the way. We need that reminder too. Jesus was faithful as could be to weekly worship during his lifetime, but the stories we have about his post-resurrection appearances aren't set in the synagogue or in the temple. Our risen Lord meets his friends in a locked room where they're cowering in fear. He walks another Via Dolorosa, a second sorrowful way, from Jerusalem to Emmaus, with two disappointed followers who feel like they've been gut-punched both physically and spiritually. Then he chooses to reveal himself to them, not on a mountaintop, but at a dinner table. The risen Lord will also greet a boatload of disciples from the shore very early another morning and cook breakfast for them on the beach. He meets us where we're at, in the midst of whatever we're feeling, including the low tide lulls of faith, hope, and love, and the high tide surges of fear, disappointment, anger, anxiety. The risen Lord pauses his journey and stops to have dinner with these two road companions because they ask him to. They don't just ask, they urged him strongly, saying, stay with us. The practical reason they give is because it is almost evening and the day is almost over. Traveling after dark in those days was a dicey proposition and finding safe lodging wasn't easy. By inviting Jesus to stay, Cleopas and his companion are offering holy hospitality to the stranger. But we can guess they weren't just being kind. They were also grateful to have a third party to their conversation, especially one who offered them hope through scriptures and gave comfort by his caring and calming presence. Our hymn of the day is, Stay With Us. It includes these verses, which may be the real reason the disciples from Emmaus urged this stranger strongly to stay on. Walk with us, our spirits sigh. Hear when our weary spirits cry. Feel again our loss, our pain. Jesus, take us to your side. Walk with us, the road will bend. Make all our weeping, wailing end. Wipe our tears, forgive our fears. Jesus, lift the heavy cross. Once the risen Lord breaks his cover by breaking the bread, he vanishes. Poof. Off he goes to places unknown. Someone has said perhaps the only way to keep him is to go with him. So let's take time this week ahead to reflect on two things. One, the Lord is most apt to grace us with his hope-engendering, comforting presence when we urge him strongly to do so issuing him a heartfelt invitation, welcoming him longingly and joyfully into our hearts and homes, as you are doing by worshiping today. And remember that picture of the Christ, standing outside a cottage door with no outer latch. It has to be unlocked from the inside. The Lord will not overwhelm our free will by forcing himself upon us, in Revelation, the risen Lord specifically says, Listen, I'm standing at the door, knocking. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to you and eat with you and you with me. And second, we are most apt to find the Lord and to stay in his company as we offer holy hospitality to the stranger. 
The Bible leaves no doubt that the Lord loves the stranger, keeps company with the stranger, and commands us as well to love, accompany, and serve the stranger in our midst. From Exodus 22, don't abuse or take advantage of strangers. Remember, you were once strangers in Egypt. From Deuteronomy 10, you must treat foreigners with loving care. From Matthew 25, whenever you did it to one of the least of these, who are members of my family, you did it to me. And from the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 13, do not neglect to offer hospitality to strangers, for by doing that, some have entertained angels unawares. Our Lord has many identities, but one that this gospel discloses is that he is the stranger, the capital S, who teaches us to welcome the stranger with a small s. The story also lets us know that the only way to keep him is to go with him into the hurting places of the heart and of the world to make his saving, risen presence known. Amen. Amen. Church, we profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God, from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the cross. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Uplift, uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. For those whose hearts are fervent with love for your gospel, that they are empowered to tell the story of your love in their lives and to show hospitality in response to this love. For the diverse natural world, for jungles, prairies, forests, valleys, mountains, and for all the wild and endangered animals who call these spaces home, that they are nurtured and protected. Lord, in your mercy. systems we have inherited and that we continue to perpetuate forgive us restrain the nations from fighting over limited resources redeem us from the cycles of scarcity and violence for all who call upon your healing name give rest stay with us and walk with all those who are hungry friendless despairing and desiring healing in body and spirit especially the hospitalized, including Vito and Greg, those in rehab, including Lily, Eugene, and Marion, and those in hospice, including Marge. Lord, in your mercy. of this church, for those whose preparation for baptism, first communion, confirmation, and membership has been delayed, for those who participate in Sunday school and adult education, guide and inspire learners of every age and ability, enable us to gather again in person in the fullness of your time. Create in our hearts a yearning to rest in your promise of eternal and resurrected life. Give us thankful hearts for those who have died, including Jeff, even as we look forward to the hope of new life with you. Lord, in your mercy. the 
risen Christ be with you always. And also with you.
should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
Let us pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia.